It is finally time. I've been waiting for this day for almost two years because the last time I went to Blade Show, I had a phenomenal time. It was a lot of fun. I made a lot of friends. I met a lot of people, but I'm not ready. I haven't packed. I haven't planned. I'm not ready to socialize. I'm just not ready. And I leave in about 16 hours. Cool. So there's the camera bag that's packed and pretty much ready to go. I think I need to add a few more things. I have a friend borrowing some gear right now that I hope they return before I leave for Blade Show tomorrow. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty okay with what I've got in here. Even if they don't, I might even take some stuff out of here. I've learned over the years that going to a show like this, it is way easy to overload yourself with things you're never gonna touch. I'm leaving a MacBook, I'm, I'm going without a computer for the first time ever, which is unlike me. But I never use them when I'm on the road like that. If I were gone for like a week, yeah, I'd bring it and edit a video from it, but I'll be gone for two and a half days. So not bringing a MacBook, I'll have an iPad with me. I probably won't even touch that, but uh, yeah. So I've, I've learned to pack light. I'll show you what I've got in my camera bag and some of the other stuff I'm taking with me. And I'm also gonna answer some of your questions because I asked for them over on Instagram earlier this week and I'll just get to your questions as I pack. So the bag that I'm bringing with me is the Peter McKinnon Nomadic bag. He sent this to me last year and I've not really had a good chance to use it for work. I've taken it on some family trips and stuff, but I've not actually been able to use this thing the way that it's intended. And I'm, I'm excited to finally get to use it how it should be used. Uh, inside this back compartment, this is a camera bag after all, I have two cameras. I'm actually gonna be using this camera for the show instead of this one. I threw this in here for looks. I'm using currently the a7S III with a Sigma 24 to 70 lens. That's gonna be my video camera. This is my still camera. This is the a7R III with a Tamron 28 to 75. Um, I probably, honestly, I might leave all the other cameras home and just take the a7S III because most likely I'm just gonna be shooting video. Got a little uh, cover here for my camera if I wanna throw it down in, the, in a different bag and don't wanna mess it up. Little blower, just in case. I get a little dirt on the lens, camera strap, which I don't really use very often. And then finally in here, I have this. So I'm not gonna be carrying this on the show floor because this is just way too much, way too heavy. I will be using this on the show floor. But for the most part, that's the, the camera equipment and stuff I'm taking. <laughs> on this bag, you do have a little laptop sleeve, which I have an iPad Pro in with a magic keyboard. If you flip the bag over, on this side, currently I just have a charger for my stuff while I'm gone, two solid state drives and some charging cables. That's it. So trying to keep it fairly light. I, I, like I said, tend to overload myself and carry way too much stuff with me that I never use. Let's talk about this real quick. This is the bag that I'll be carrying. Some of you asked me about this in the REI video. This is called the Dad's Fanny and it is technically a fanny pack, but they set it up to where you can use it as a sling, which is how I carry it. All I have in here right now are stickers and business cards, but this is what I'll be using on the show floor because it's just super handy. If I buy something, I can throw it down in here. This is enough to get me through the show. In the front pocket, I've got like hand sanitizer, breath mints, chewing gum, because you do a lot of talking. At a show like this, you definitely want to take things like that. Chapstick, handkerchief, band-aids for whatever reason, in case I cut myself on the show floor, which is probably pretty likely. But there's one thing I'm forgetting about Blade Show. The most important thing you can do in preparation Save yourself the trouble, leave your wallet at home, 
you have been warned. I had to uh, bring my plant out so I can get some sun. Look at this. It's a really cool plant I found at Lowe's. So it's got new sprouts are green, but in like a few weeks, all of this green will be black. It's a black plant and it is so cool. But the other thing about Blade Show that you have to prepare for is what knives do you bring? That's so hard. How do you narrow it down? How do you, I, I, how do I ever narrow it down? Let's get to some questions really quickly. The very first one actually comes from none other than Talon Sai. He said, when are we making a video? Uh, well, it probably would have been easier before you moved halfway across the country. Uh, but yeah, I'm open. <laughs> the next question comes from Ford Logan 2020. What's your favorite handle material? Bar none. It has to be micarta. I love micarta and titanium together or just micarta or just titanium, but love both of those materials. It's kind of a toss up between them. Baker W8 says, what's your favorite blade around the $500 mark other than CRK and Hindwer? Easy, no question about it. Very easy to answer for that. Shurogorov, Neon Zero, Neon NL, just the Shurogorov Neon in general. I think these are phenomenal, phenomenal knives. This is one of my top five easily one of my top five knives that I have in my collection. This one in particular is the Shurgorov Neon Zero, full titanium handle and a M390 blade. Just absolute butter, built like a tank, and it looks really good. And then Sean Todd 5473 said, just wanted to ask how you've been. I'm doing great. I feel the best I've felt in a very, very, very long time, like a decade at least. No exaggeration, I feel really good right now. Last year really crept up on me. It was a bad year, not in terms of the channel or business or family, just me personally, I was not in a good spot. And I didn't realize that. Like in hindsight, it's easy to see, but in real time, I just didn't notice. I felt bad, I had no motivation. I, some people in the comments last year said that I was depressed. I don't know if it was depression, maybe it was. I, I genuinely don't know, don't care really what it was. I know that I was in a funk for a very long time and a lot of people were due to the pandemic. So it, I wasn't going through anything special, but I really let myself go last year. A couple of years ago, I really started to realize that my body wasn't where I wanted it to be. My back hurt, my shoulder hurt, just all these old injuries were coming up and really giving me trouble. And uh, I just pushed it aside, ignored it. And then, you know, a couple months ago it, it hit me and I feel, a million times better because I've put forth the effort to make myself better. But yeah, I, I feel really good. I'm doing great, family's great, channel's great, I love the space, I have a shop, I've got a lot of good things going right now, lots of motivation, and I'm about to go to Blade Show, so I'm, I'm pumped to get out and see people again. So yeah, all things are very, very good right now. Thanks for asking. Eduardo ODZ said, is it worth holding back on multiple cheaper knives in order to get one high-end knife? There, there are two ways to go about it, and I wouldn't say one is necessarily better than the other, or at least not like categorically better than the other. It, it's just two different approaches. And one is, if you like variety, get a bunch of different knives. You can kind of learn what you like and then get rid of them. You can always sell a knife and make back most of what you put into it, as long as you didn't absolutely destroy the knife. The other approach is to have what you've got and then save up and then you eventually get that knife that you like. The downside to that is maybe you don't like that knife and you haven't had all this experience with a bunch of other knives to really know what you like. You think you like it until you get it in your hands. That's happened to me a bunch. I see a knife. I love it. I work my way towards that knife. I get it. And I'm like, eh, that's not my thing. And I get rid of it. But that's the advantage of having a higher end knife. You can usually get rid of it, depending on how rare it is. You might even actually make a little bit of money on it. So yeah, different approaches. There's no right or wrong. I say test out the waters with some cheaper knives. If you don't like them, get rid of them and go the other route. It doesn't actually have to be one or the other. You can test the waters out. Josiah Simpson one said, at what point did you start making money from your videos and whatnot? Well, I don't know what and whatnot means, but uh, as far as making money on my videos, I've been doing YouTube for a long time, longer than a lot of people seem to know. I made tech reviews back in the day. I've worked for like, I don't know, eight different YouTube channels that were not my own. And then I, during that entire time, I had my own channel and I made money through YouTube way back then through my own channel. It wasn't a whole lot. It was like $12,000, which sounds like a lot, but that was spread out over like five or six years. So really it wasn't a whole lot. Cause if you do the math and how much time I put into each video, I was making barely anything like 
a dollar per hour, roughly, something like that. But because I had such a long history on YouTube, it was easy to get past the threshold for monetization with this channel. So very, very early on from the time I started this channel, I think I was monetized within like a month and a half of starting the best MEDC. But yeah, it, it's something I've put a lot of effort into for a very long time, and I did make some money, so it wasn't like totally wasted time. Uh, the vast, vast, vast majority of people, I would argue, have to work very, very hard to get past that threshold for making money. So if that's what you're interested in, I think it's worth it if you really are serious about it and want to do this and go down that path. But it is harder and harder and harder to get started on YouTube because there are more and more people all the time. So uh, tomorrow is gonna be harder than today. Not much, but it will be harder. So the longer you wait, if you are very interested in starting a YouTube channel, the longer you wait, the harder it will be. That's my two cents. All right, I'm gonna go finish packing for Blade and getting everything ready. We'll get back to more questions later. Before we go any further, I would like to thank our sponsor for this video, Ridge Wallet. If you're not familiar with Ridge Wallet by now, they make very slim, sleek, lightweight, and durable wallets. They don't bulge in your front pocket, there's no folding, and they're very, very tough. Most people are still carrying around big, thick, heavy wallets with receipts and photos and loyalty cards inside. We now use our phones for payments and all sorts of other stuff, so there's no reason to carry all of those things around with you. So you might as well upgrade to a slimmer, lighter wallet that's not gonna weigh you down. Ridge Wallet will hold up to 12 cards and it has room for cash and they come in a bunch of different colors and materials such as carbon fiber titanium and they also have this really cool damascus wallet and because of the durable materials that ridge wallet uses each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty which means you can buy this one wallet and carry it for life and ridge wallet is so confident that you will like this wallet that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days and if you don't love it you can return it for a full refund. So if you want to support this channel and get 10% off your order with free worldwide shipping, go to ridge.com forward slash carry on and use code carry on at checkout. And once again, thank you Ridge for sponsoring this video. Mark over at Arc Company he says, how's the new Overlander rig build going? It's going. And by going, I mean, I haven't really touched it in a while. I, I drive it a lot, but I haven't done anything to it. Uh, after the suspension video where I put the lift kit on it, um, I fixed the coolant issue, which I just burped the, the coolant, um, fixed a few other problems, but I haven't really done a whole lot because I've been preoccupied with other things, spending money on different things. I just haven't put a lot of time into the, the Land Rover, but I will soon. Um, bumpers, I'm working on those right now, roof rack, and then beyond that, it's just going to be a slow roll. The plan is to take it out on its first trip like camping trip probably fall it gets really hot and miserable camping here in the summer uh, maybe i could go a little further north i don't know we'll see but the plan maybe i'll beat my goal but the plan is to have the first trip in the fall my, my buddy dylan says edc loadout on the super 73 what's a super 73 if you guys want to know more about that I'll, I'll make a video about it later but not right now later boost matters says what are you most excited to see at blade show 2021 people it sounds so dumb to say but the knives and gear and all that's really really cool but i miss socializing and seeing people and and just living <laughs> i miss it so much and that's what i'm most excited for more importantly than that i'm excited to actually meet some of the makers the first blade show i went to uh this channel was like eight months old or so nine months old um, I had like 70,000 subscribers and in the grand scheme of things, nobody really knew who the channel was. So I was getting brushed aside a lot. Now that I've been around for a lot, much longer, I think it'll be a lot better going into Blade Show. I'm excited to kind of see the difference in, in the two years since the last Blade Show. Corey Ivans says, have you done an unusual items EDC video? I have, and it's called unusual EDC gear that you didn't know existed. I did that last year. I actually have another one of those planned. It's not completed. I, I've put together some pretty unusual stuff, but I don't have everything. I, there's some, it's missing something. It needs that extra touch. So if you know of some pretty unusual gear, DM it to me on Instagram or put it in the comments down below and maybe I'll include it in the next unusual EDC gear video. I'd like to make that a recurring video. I don't want to do it too often because one, there's just not that much unusual stuff and I don't want it to be, you know, gimmicky or anything. I do want to genuinely find weird, unusual, but still functional and useful EDC gear. So yeah, I've done one, I'm doing another. I'd like to do more. Bradley Richard says, what is your favorite soda? I don't have one. I don't drink soda. I've been 
eating pretty damn clean lately. I cut out soda a long time ago and I really don't care for it. Anytime I've had one in the last like three or four years, I immediately regret it. Uh, EDC Wyoming says, when you're releasing the old EDC weekly videos. So I was actually thinking about this a while back. I have a massive catalog of videos that are no longer live on YouTube. And I've thought about doing, maybe somehow incorporating them into this channel. So they exist on another channel, they're private. Um, I took them down for a number of reasons, but I may re-release them over on this channel. And I'm just not sure how to go about it. Um, if you guys want to see some of the old videos, the what eventually led to this channel existing, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I'll try to figure out how to release those. Maybe I can do that when I'm busy with other things or like a couple weeks I'm going on vacation. Maybe I can release like an old from the vault video. Maybe that could be kind of cool. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys want to see the old EDC weekly videos. There's like 50 plus, I think. There's a lot of them. DL Kicks and Gear says, how's the shop coming along and what are some plans for it? Uh, shop hasn't really changed much either. Like I said, I've been preoccupied. There is stuff going on in the background that you guys won't see for a while. There's some stuff that I can't talk about yet because it's not set in stone. It's not even confirmed at all. Like I can't talk about it, but there are some very, very big plans. I have bought a few things for the shop. Um, I've been buying tools, a lot of tools, just, you know, drills and angle grinders and different things that I need for the shop. So I've been picking some of that stuff up. I did buy a power supply recently and an ultrasonic cleaner. So that'll give you some clues as to where some of that content is going. But uh, yeah, haven't been out to the shop a whole lot, waiting on water and a few other things to happen there, but um, I can still use it. It's just kind of hot and there's nowhere to use the bathroom if I have to go to the bathroom. So uh, yeah, shop's coming along, but no major updates yet. There will be soon. Uh, Roma Noodle 17 says, how do I get on the Discord? Very simple, just go to discord.gg forward slash EDC. That's all you have to do, join the Discord. Oak City Leather Supply says, how do you like working out with a trainer? As I've mentioned in this video prior, I'm focusing on health and fitness and, and fixing some of the stuff that I've put off for years. I have focused on work and all these other things and let my health slide. And I really started to notice that last year. The year before I learned that I had scoliosis and I had chronic back pain for like two years. And I know this is not answering the question yet, but I'm getting there. So before my son was born, I moved into this new office, as you guys know, and in the basement, there's a little private gym. I talked to the owner of that and I said, after my son is born, no excuses. I, I gotta get myself right because I, I don't want to not be able to play with my kids. After work, even though I come here, sit at a desk most of the time and I'm shooting videos, sitting down, I'm not doing a whole lot. It's mentally exhausting, but I, I just had no energy any time. I felt horrible. My back was always hurting. My shoulders started hurting all the time. My hands were hurting. You guys might remember from the Land Rover lift kit video, my hand, I had that trigger finger. I couldn't release the, the wrench. My fingers are relaxed. Pull that finger, seriously. Okay, is it's it gonna be weird? No, it's just stuck. Oh, oh, it's back. Like, I'm not joking. Trigger finger. Uh, I don't think <laughs> like my to hands, happen. My hands are relaxed, but that finger is stuck. Like, I could stretch it out, but if I relax it... That's weird. That was the worst it had ever been. And that was one of my first indicators, like, something's wrong. I've got to fix this because I could slowly feel things getting worse. So a couple of months after my son was born, I started focusing on getting my nutrition right. And I had already lost, before I even stepped foot in the gym, I'd lost probably about 15 pounds. And um, at some point after the owner of the gym, his name is Jeff, he was like, all right, you got two weeks, two weeks I'm gonna see you in this gym, let's do it. And I've been seeing him twice a week for a little over a month now and Man, it feels great. Twice a week is not quite enough. So starting this week, we're stepping up to a third day. And yeah, I feel better on days that I work out. I just enjoy it. I'm very sore today. And so there, that's been something that I've had to get used to. And uh, it's been eye-opening to see how far I have to go and how hard I'm gonna have to work to get to where I wanna be. But to answer the question, what it's like working out with a trainer, I, I don't see another way that I would have been able to do this without a trainer. Um, I could look up workouts and try to figure it out on my own, but 
it, it's the accountability. It's it, it takes a lot of the pressure off of me. It puts it on on the trainer. I can come in and he's got the plan for me. I know what I'm doing because he wrote it out. And if I don't show up, I mean, I, he doesn't care. I mean, I'm sure maybe he cares a little, but the only person that really loses out for me, like dropping the ball or not being there is, is me. So I like that, where it takes that pressure and puts it on me in a different way. It takes away the stress of trying to figure things out and, and just all I have to do is show up and do what he tells me to do. And it and he gets me to where I need to be. I mean, I we, we did a test last week to see how I compared to the very first week and there are noticeable improvements. Um, I, I can see it in my body. I can feel it day to day. Just, I have energy, I can do things, I'm stronger, I've got a little more stamina, just everything feels better. I'm doing everything right now that I have not been doing for a very long time. So I feel the best I've felt in like 10 years. And uh, in about four weeks, I'm gonna be done with a trainer and moving out on my own. He's gonna be doing plans for me and I show up at the gym and do it the same way, but it's just me there. So that will be the interesting thing for me is to see how I operate when no one else is there. As far as working out with a trainer, highly recommend it, um, worth every penny. I, I feel great. And the last question comes from B Bowers Photos. What in the hell is that beautiful ProTech you keep showing? You mean this beautiful ProTech? This is a prototype of the Runt 5 with the bronze aluminum alloy scales or handles. These were hand ground by Mike Erie, I believe it is. I think it's Erie. Um, they have CPM 154 blade steel. The production version will have uh, 20 CV. And it also comes with an aluminum handle if, you, if that's what you want. But these have this beautiful mosaic inlay button. And you can already see the patina. I've only had this thing for like four or five days. So yeah, this is a prototype. But if you are interested in getting one of these, they will have some at Blade Show. That's it, guys. Thank you for asking all of these amazing questions. Sorry if I didn't get to yours. There were just way, way too many. I'll try to get to some more over on Instagram. But you'll probably see those before this video goes live. Anyway, thank you again. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you want to support the show, there are links in the description to some of my favorite EDC products. If you purchase using those links, I get a little bit of a kickback. You can also go to carrycommission.com or carry.best. That's my store. You can get this hat and this shirt directly from me as well as other merch and gear. You can also support over on Patreon if you want to do it that way. And you can follow us in most places at bestmedc. But with that said, and until next time, carry on. And I hope to see you guys at Blade Show. If you see me, don't be afraid to say hello. See you guys.